gentlemen, hey, con congratulations for Ghost of, Ghost Waits. A Ghost Waits? Is that what it was? A Ghost Waits, yes. Thank a you. Ghost, a Ghost Waits. You, you know, you know, it's actually funny. I actually saw this movie a while ago. I think it was at a festival, virtual festival called Fright Fest. Yeah, yeah. And, and I and I thought it was one of the better movies because it was extremely unique. It was not nothing that I've seen, and I was overly impressed because it was a. I, I want to say it's a micro budget movie. Am I, yes, am I, am that I, would be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> is is so teeny tiny the budget? <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with the easy question: Where did the idea actually came from for Ghost Waits? Uh, McCloud and I had spent a year trying to make another movie, um, and we got really close, and it just didn't happen, which was hugely dispiriting. No pun intended. Um, and I went back to Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I grew up just south of there in Northern Kentucky and didn't know what I was going to do next. And while I was there, my friends, Brian and Jen Price had me play this video game called PT, uh, which is this like first person haunted house puzzle game that Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima designed. Um, and it was really cool. I was playing that and I just had them cracking up laughing because I was like, I was reacting to a haunted house. Uh, so, you know, noises happen and I'm like nope don't need to check that out I'm fine um and so and, and they were just like I mean, that but you're supposed to that's the game you're supposed to go around the corner and be scared like, this no, is why I play sports I games I understand <laughs> those uh I understand basketball I can do that um so uh but that kind of you know watching them just like crack up laughing uh, and they got their phones out to record it. And I was like, you know, there might be a movie in someone like me in a haunted house, like a character like me. Um, and then around that time, I also found this webcomic, Saturday Morning Breakfast Serial, where, uh, you know, guy asks this girl, you know, what's the most American movie? And she says, Ghostbusters, because here's a movie that you, where you have demonstrable proof of an afterlife. And the whole movie is about growing a small business and navigating government bureaucracy. And I thought, well, that's really funny. But also, yeah, that is true. Like, Ghost being there's an afterlife. I have so many questions. And that really gave the spine for what became a Ghost Waits. Well, the bureaucracy usually is from the human side. And you guys introduced mm -hmm. the bureaucracy from the ghost side in, in this one. Bureaucracy is eternal, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the true horror of the Ghost Waits. <laughs> that, that, that is true. I'm not going to dispute that point. <laughs> so... So how, how did you guys go into the uh, writing process? Uh, you guys um, wrote, wrote it together um, in this case. And, and McLeod, did you, did you write it intending yourself to be in the, in the film? Uh, well, I, I guess it was, I should clarify how my writing credit came about. I was not part of the writing at the inception. Um, Adam busted out the screenplay uh, very quickly after we got a little bit of financing uh, with me in mind for Jack. Uh, it was later when we did a couple of reshoots when uh, I started to influence more of, you know, uh, the scenes that we were shooting to kind of fix some gaps that we discovered through test screenings. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where my writing credit came in. So the answer to your question is no, I did not write with <laughs> myself in mind. <laughs> I very much wrote with him in mind. <laughs> did, did, um, did you really, or did you have to convince McLeod to uh, join this project? Um, you know, we, we met on the set of another movie and very quickly just became, you know, very good friends, very close friends. Uh, we find the same stuff. We find a lot of the same stuff interesting. We have very similar senses of humor. Uh, and so when I had this, you know, even though he's not like in the room writing pages with me, he's still having to like answer way too many messages and emails about it. Or just like, Hey, I have this idea. Hey, what do you think about this? Um, you know, and it just, uh, and yeah, like I wanted to make a movie with him. Um, I want to make all movies with him. Like a, he's just an incredibly talented actor and producer, but yeah. um, you are quiet. Take the, <laughs> take the compliment. Um, but uh, yeah, like Jack was, it was interesting because Jack's kind of a synthesis of the two of us. You know, there's a lot of both of us in that character. And um, it was really kind of fun to explore that somewhat unconsciously. Like he said, I wrote this very fast, kind of by the seat of my pants. And so 
you know, there's all this stuff that like, I wouldn't say is a conscious choice, but uh, <laughs> all kind of works because it's coming from the same very genuine place. Um, and fortunately, that's something that he and I share. Sounds like McLeod, this, this film was up your alley then. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, I love Adam's writing. I, I've often said whenever I get a script of his, it, it usually takes about two pages before I'm just saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and just mumbling to myself because <laughs> I just can't, it, I, I feel that his dialogue really just pops off the page. Um, so I've been looking forward to finally making something with Adam and, uh, and yeah, I think we have a similar sensibility in terms of our senses of humor and kind of wonder at matters of existential import. <laughs> um, that's a really good friend to find, by the way, because like most people are very much annoyed by my existentialism, but uh, I <laughs> was just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is lamp? <laughs> it's a valid question. <laughs> valid question. <laughs> so Although, uh, when you're making a movie and you have two existential people like improvising on set, I mean, it can get real abstract. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so, so tell us the journey that be this became a micro budget film. Was it just circumstances or you just wanted to basically just push out and make a film? Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> Both. You know, uh, yeah. I, some years back I'd written a script that people liked, but we just couldn't raise enough money. Um, and so I wrote a smaller script and we still couldn't raise enough money. And it's really... The, the economics of filmmaking I find hugely confounding because you like anything else you would say what does this cost and th like things have a price but if you're making a film it costs whatever you have like everyone says what's the budget and you're like well what like what's your day rate and they're like well my day rate depends on what your budget is it's because everybody wants to maximize the value of their time mm -hmm. But like film is kind of built on not doing that until you get to a certain level. Um, and now culture at large is about devaluing the work of people. But um, yeah, so like, you know, we, we tried and we tried and we tried. And finally, it was just like, you know what? Screw this. Like, what costs money? What do you have to spend money on? What is a movie? Again, existential. Uh, you know, I remember like telling McLeod, like, okay, it's a scene. You need people doing a scene in a place and a way to record it. Like that's <laughs> all it is. So anything else doesn't get money. <laughs> um, and that was, yeah, we just, we had to break it down to, uh, to very, you know, cause there were also no real connections, you know, like, um, you know, neither one of us could really make a call to, you know, uh, in, you know, kind of proper investors, um, you know, really looking forward to that day though. Uh, but yeah, so it was just like, okay, this is what we have. And instead of lamenting what we don't have, let's just use the hell out of what we have. Well, then let, let, let's bring up what you did have. You have a house that was sparsely <laughs> furnished. Whose yep. house was that that was sparsely furnished? <laughs> that was our associate producer. John Mark James, the gentleman, yeah. the legend. Um. <laughs> Yeah, John, uh, we knew each other through social media, really, like, I, we'd been in the same place a couple of times, but it was mostly, you know, uh, just social media interactions. And I did a lot of like, hey, you know, okay, this movie is happening. So, you know, if we like, for the montage, you know, hey, who wants to be in a haunted house movie? If you have time free on these days, you know, pick a, pick a time slot and come on down. Um, you know, and it was the same thing. Like, we need a house. And John had said, well, I got, I just moved into this place. Uh, you're welcome to use it. And we looked at a few different places. We looked at some houses that were like proper, like movie house. Yeah, like gorgeous like, Victorian. But then they were like, this is a real, this is a, a beautiful house. Like, uh, can we shoot here? And they're like, of course you can. <laughs> and we're like, cool, how much? And they're like, five grand a week. And we're like, <laughs> bye. Have a nice night. Have yep. a nice night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas John was never that. John, um, I think we kind of caught him at kind of the perfect time too. He was kind of starting a new chapter in his life. And um, yeah, just 
kind of down to, he loves art and artists he used to own a record store and like the basement was the coolest basement there was just music and old magazines and just i mean we we had to move a lot of stuff out of the way but we also <laughs> were just like this is awesome yeah. um you just lose some time down there uh but yeah he was just great and whatever we needed you know we we ended up having to do two sets of pickups um this movie was shot over the course of three years mm-hmm. and he always, and it was funny because at the time of principal photography, he was, I, I remember him saying a couple of times like, Oh, you guys are using this a lot more than I thought you would like, that's cool. So, you know, I think he thought we were going to be in there for just like a couple of days. And instead we were in there for pretty much two weeks. And then every time we needed to come back, like he was always down. Yeah. Um, and then, and in that regard, I, he's kind of the patron saint of the film. Uh, it's, his willingness and to every and every time we came in is we're so sorry we're so sorry thank you so much he's like hey guys like i'm just happy to be a part of it and and to help you guys create something that means something to you and we were like oh my gosh thank you <laughs> can we hug you uh, it was really cool he uh when we screened at scream fest in la in october he and his girlfriend like flew out to like be there and just like messaged me on social media like hey just letting you know like we're gonna be there I'm like oh wow that's <laughs> cool like let, let's go to get dinner um yeah he was he was a really great part of the team oh that's terrific well let's 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 figure out your next part of the budget is the cast um so are the <laughs> cast like uh, people you knew friends and and did you play, pay mcleod with sandwiches <laughs> we couldn't afford sandwiches <laughs> i think it was it was hugs and pats on the back yeah good job buddy now go get that light um <laughs> you know yeah like some of the people in it um amanda miller who plays ms henry i knew a little bit i'd seen her in a, a bunch of shorts uh short films made in the area and she was always the best part of them and i just remember thinking like i want to work with her um and then she plays Miss Henry. Did you mention yep. that? Yeah. Yes. Cool. The ghost supervisor. The ghost supervisor. Uh, um, and then the the opening family, I was on a panel. Or no, I was a part of a script read with the guy who's the dad in the opening section. That's how I met Jeremy. Oh. Uh, yeah. I thought and you were going with the voice. And I was like, you knew no, the no. voice? Okay. No, I, I have not met those people. <laughs> um and then i mean it's really like the ending montage angela in the shower the the woman in the shower i knew uh yeah there's a few people in the movie that i knew but natalie had never met before uh sydney we found through casting hadn't met hadn't didn't know her tim was another guy who plays the pizza guy um he social media is just like you know i need somebody and he was like yeah i'll do it um uh, so really like McLeod and I had been friends for a while, but pr- you know, pretty much everyone else was either a stranger or uh, kind of a, an acquaintance or a friend of a friend. Wow. Cast how, was. How, how did it feel uh, that you practically had to carry this movie? Well, I guess technically uh, with the help of Natalie, of course. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh <laughs> fine because because i was just making a movie with my good friend adam uh um i mean like the first half a lot like the first half where it's just me uh for the majority of it that was largely reshoots um and that was just me and adam so that was uh and someone else asked me um you know, was it hard to act alone? And and my response to that was, I wasn't acting alone. I was acting with Adam. Uh, so it was not hard. It was great because uh, it, act, just working alongside your best bud, you 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 can be more vulnerable. You don't have to worry about you know making a fool of yourself, and you can give a really honest, intimate performance. So. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, I I'm just quite taken with the creative process and the 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 process of building something. So I like I like rolling my sleeves up and being in the being in the ditch uh, working. So 
I just kept focusing on the movie as a whole and what it needed and to make it better. So yeah, the, the, I didn't think about the, I don't know, the star turn element of it or like the, Ooh, this is a movie about me. And I just, that just didn't really cross my mind. You, you guys indicated before that there was a like, quite a, quite a bit of improv on in this movie. Am I correct? There was a good amount, but probably less than you would think. Um, the there's some like vamped moments, like the real meat of every scenes, even during the reshoots, you know, Adam and I would figure out what was going to happen beforehand. And like, sometimes we'd say like, you know, just say more or less this and, and we get the scene that way, but that was pretty rare. Um, the, the toilet, me talking to the toilet is improvised, um, which is essentially, you know, just a, a vamp off of the meat of the scene, which is the part that we needed. Uh, you know, Natalie and I would sometimes rattle off some extra dialogue uh, during the kitchen scene, uh, the various kitchen scenes. Um, but, you know, the rest is just Adam's beautiful writing. Well, but, I mean, the first act, the first third of the movie, you know, that we, we retooled so much in, in reshoots, you know, honestly, a lot of that, you know, I kind of feel like is improvised because it was us just well, in the space, like, okay, what works, you know I mean? And sure. then we'd, we'd kind of have like a broad idea. <laughs> it was like, okay, now this is basically what we need. How do we do that in a way that's compelling and entertaining um, and that we're not going to be embarrassed of in hmm. a year. <laughs> yeah. So I guess like there were, those scenes were improvised in that, like we were, we would literally figure them out and then the day of, or the next day, shoot them without any, you know, planning or prep or, you know, we'd be, we'd just shoot as we, as we created, um, but not improv and the like, okay, we have everything set up now, just go um yeah yeah well, then how how is it working alongside uh natalie uh your, your co-star in, in this one or oh. your, your your romantic lead <laughs> i mean she's fantastic uh she's she's a ridiculously fun person she's like super high energy smart as a whip and and yeah it was great it was just a, a really fun time which is like surprising because her character is so subdued, but um, that was part of what was so fun is like to watch her, you know, just kind of pull it all in and like, you know, just vibrating there behind her, behind her eyes. Well, this, this, this film being a micro budget movie, you get, you guys have to do, you know, do everything yourselves, you know, DIY mm -hmm. here. So <laughs> so let, let let let's talk about the what 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 do they call it the special effects and makeup. <laughs> and so so how what's what what's the magic? What what did you guys do? You know to to move your cabinets or imply, you know, put up your own makeup. What's how was that like? How do you think we moved the cabinets? <laughs> <laughs> Is if it's just like my house, is it just moves by itself? Actual ghosts. <laughs> actual we ghosts. Actual ghosts. Uh, <laughs> we had to kill a lot of people. <laughs> that's gonna be the. That's gonna be like the one soundbite that they take. Oh no. <laughs> um, fishing line. Just fishing line. Yeah. We moved. Uh, we did, we used a lot of fishing line, um, and then the makeup is Madeline Winters. Um, she's a really talented makeup artist there in Cincinnati, um, who just, we, we actually originally had a different person in that role, but we were shooting at the same time as a movie with an actual budget. So we were just losing folks, uh, to, you know, a proper paycheck. And so Madeline was a friend of a friend. Um, we met, I, you know, told her what the story was. She asked for headshots of the actors and just like did a little mock-up of what she saw as the character and kind of, I mean, it's the same thing with Natalie. The second Natalie, she did a self tape of for Muriel and the second it starts, she's like, yep, that's Muriel. Like the second we saw Madeline's work, which is like, yep, that's, that's yeah, she, she under, she intuited the tone of the film just kind of right off the bat. So, yeah. Well, 
Of course, you actually had to use fake blood. So what syrup was that? And McLeod, did that taste good? Of course. It was just chocolate syrup and red food coloring diluted with a little bit of water. You just keep mixing it until you get it to look the way you want. And then it didn't matter anyway because it was black and white. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the magic of a movie business. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So, so I guess it comes down to the ultimate question because this movie is black and white. And we want to know it's like... A, when did you actually come up with that that decision? Is because uh, because I remember I I watched a uh, an interview with you know a famous director Kevin Smith where he did his first movie Clerks in black and white and someone actually asked him and he actually remarked that but doing it black and white is not cheap. It's, it was actually more expensive for him. But uh, why did you guys wanted to do it black and white? Was it was it cheaper or was that you just wanted aesthetically do something different? Well. Originally, in like in in pre-production, I I wanted to I, I remember telling my UPM we were on a location scout and I was like you know I've I've been thinking I kind of want to make the movie in black and white I love the black and white aesthetic I love how it looks um, and I knew that I knew that I wanted to make something that was much closer to classic horror than modern horror um, even though the storytelling is very modern um, I just that's where that's my jam. Um, and so, and she said quite rightly, no, it's not going to be in black and white. Don't do that because it's really hard to sell. We got a lot of no's from festivals and from uh, distributors purely off the black and white. Like we dig it, but like, no, uh, nobody wants black and white now. So, but, um, you know, so we, we shot it in color with the intention of making, you know, of it being in color. We had, we even did like a little mock-up of what we were going to do, the effect we were going to use in After Effects for Muriel and the ghosts. Um, but so Mike Potter shot pr principal photography and he shot, he had a, a minimal light rig, but he had lights and he was using his camera, which was a Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini, which is a 4K camera and mine, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, which is a digital 16. So, and then when we did pickups, we couldn't afford to bring anybody back. So it was just me and McLeod and I was shooting. So I was using my camera and we used, except for one shot, purely natural light. Um, there was one shot where we couldn't use natural light. We had to like go to Home Depot and get some work lights uh, to put up. But, um, and so then when it came time in editing and color correction, I could never quite get the images to match like I wanted them to. They just, they weren't visually coherent uh, or cohesive enough for my taste. Um, it's entirely possible that nobody would notice the difference now, but I noticed and it drove me insane. So uh, we were going back and we were trying to figure out what to do. And finally one day McLeod said, hey, have you thought about making it in black and white? And I was like, I have. And so we dropped uh, a black and white LUT on it, which is a color correction algorithm that you mm -hmm. can just drop on an image. And it immediately just felt right. Like seeing Muriel and Rosie and everything in black and white, it just, not only did it solve these technical issues, but thematically and tonally, it was just like, yep, that's the movie. Um, and I can't, like, it's only been kind of now, as we look back on this, now that it's kind of a fixed document and we're no longer tinkering, that I can kind of see that like, oh, right. Like the black and white, you know, you have, uh, you have a character in Mur Muriel, who's this like from the Victorian era. And then you have this contemporary man and it kind of by, by, uh, cause black and white is such a, uh, not an affectation, but it really does point out how much of a construct film is. So it kind of fed the surreality of the story in a really interesting way. Oh, that's 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 actually excellent. Well, McLeod, you got credit for that. <laughs> yeah, it was part of the decision making. <laughs> well, I, excellent, gentlemen. Um, and you know, th this entire film, to to me, the reason why it's fascinating is it, it, it wasn't, you know, it was impressive because of the micro budget. But I fi I find the fa fascinating because of the story. You know, basically, well, thank you. A regular handyman going into a house, getting haunted, and not 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 getting the scared the shit out of him and falls in love, you know, boy 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 meets girl um, type type of a story. So uh -huh. yeah, boy so, meets ghoul. Oh boy! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh gosh! 
Okay, oh, gosh, the house it is... started. The house is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is there uh, possibilities uh, for more for yourselves, or or do you guys want to do do something like this again, but with with something different? Uh, I mean, I do have an idea for a ghost weights too. Um, <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen, but I do have the idea. Uh, no, we're we're working on a thing right now that um, seems to have a chance. Uh, of getting made it's a you know it's a it's a bigger you know we'll have more money and resources it's still not going to be huge but you know it it, cross, it it clears the low bar of costing more than a ghost weights did uh <laughs> but it's a it's a little sci-fi thing kind of a time travel road movie hmm. um and that's been a lot of fun so hopefully we get to do that uh but there's also i mean there's no shortage of ideas the two of us you know have lots of stories that we want to tell um that we feel like aren't being told or aren't being told in a way that we like you know because like one thing i really love about this movie is that it's about a blue collar worker and it never diminishes blue collar work he's proud of his work he, even if he doesn't know why he does what he does as a person he still takes a lot of pride in it and i feel like especially in like contemporary and modern uh, American storytelling, we really don't see a lot of that. It's all aspirational. It's all, you know, mm -hmm. there's wealth porn and, and whatnot. And like, it was really nice to just tell a small story about people who take pride in their work. Absolutely. Well, just be careful with sequels. Usually their budgets get inflated quite a bit. <laughs> Cannot wait. Please, please. <laughs> I'm dying to sell out. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Ghost Waits 2 stars James Bond. Let's do it. <laughs> it's in Star Wars, too. We'll just get them all in. Daniel Craig can just, like, brush off that, like, weird Georgia accent he loves to do. Yeah. Be, 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 be careful. Uh, Dan, Daniel Craig has a high price with that, especially with that James Bond, that new James Bond movie that cannot be released during the pandemic. <laughs> I mean, that's just responsibility. I'm glad they're not. You know, well, you know, he's, like, he's he's waiting on that paycheck because they they oh, they he got said, that paycheck, son. They, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. They, they signed him. How, how much are they offering him? Like a James Bond does not work on a layaway plan 100 to 150 million. So, you know, and they're and they're trying to shop it to uh, you know, Netflix and Amazon for like 700 800 million dollars, and and yeah. all the streaming services are like. No, no one buys a movie for that much for streaming, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, but I get, I guess, I guess it's uh, wait, wait and see. Well, let me let me uh, wrap it up with one more question for you, Jim, sure. because obviously we're we're talking virtually right now, and you know, I'm I'm sure we're we're all over the country, and so on. How are you guys staying sane and creative during times like this? Uh, well, that seems very generous of you to sit, to assume we're staying sane. Uh, <laughs> well, after a ghost waits, and I'm, a, I'm assuming maybe you're sane. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was really not, it's been really nice to have this project to kind of get lost in, you know, anytime I, I definitely, you know, I, I mean, I hit my 2020 wall just like anyone else did and like broke down crying at times over nothing. Um, but it was really nice to be in a bubble of work and to, you know, I do love this movie and I, I, I get to, I got to like sit with it and work with my friend. And, um, and so really like, that's kind of, that was the lifeboat in all of this. That was the thing that kept it, kept me afloat and kept me, kept my head above water. Um, and then as far as creative, I mean, there's not really an option. Like that's just what my brain does is like, think about story ideas and, process things in weird ways so yeah that's that has been the solution to the problem of quarantine oh mcleod being sane um, and creative was that uh yeah i guess i'm staying uh fairly sane um i i agree with adam uh luckily we were at a stage uh of you know this film's uh path where whatever needed to be done could be done digitally. Um, uh, so we, and there was still plenty to be done. Uh, so, uh, so that was, you know, took our minds off my mind off things. I also had just had a baby girl in February. So 
uh, being a new dad certainly, <laughs> certainly uh, doesn't leave much room for, um, you know, spiraling because uh, you have to you have to keep that wonderful little creature alive and happy. Um, and then I, I my my job is I narrate audiobooks, um, and I'm fortunate that you know I've got a booth and uh, uh, so I can keep doing my job uh, from home. Uh, yeah. which is something I'm very grateful for, but it's all, and it's also very time consuming. So again, <laughs> but be, between that, the movie and a baby, uh, I, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to worry too much. Um, it's funny. I would like see you tweet something about like current events and I just be like, Oh, McLeod had time to come out of the bubble. Like good for him. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sorry that the world's on fire, but yay, you had a moment. Yeah. I read a, I read a headline. I read a newspaper article. <laughs> <laughs> and and was always regretful. <laughs> yeah. And maybe McLeod, just real fast. Is that a do it yourself recording booth or or did you actually had had someone create that for you? I, that was actually uh, created by uh, Scott Peterson. He builds uh, little modular booths of varying sizes. And uh, I used to, uh, my old apartment, it, it went in the closet and, and I had, to, I, so I got a custom, I got him to make his smallest one even smaller. <laughs> so, so it would fit in the closet. Uh, I think it's like the floor plans, like something like three and a half by two and a half feet. Um, <laughs> that's where I recorded Neil's lines. Yeah, yeah, we did some. We did some of the ADR for Ghost Weights in there. Oh wow! Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, magic, magic of production. Well, anyway. I'll tell you, we we got really lucky on this. I mean, not. I mean, initially we got really lucky with collaborators, but then. You know, we our world premiere was at Fright Fest Glasgow, which was the penultimate festival to happen before everything shut down. And we were able to react and kind of tweak things from afar using, you know, the cloud and whatnot. And then, you know, just Fright Fest bringing us back, which they don't often do. Um, and, you know, Scream Fest, I mean, just being able to work on it and it, and it continually screening in seemingly the perfect place where the audience was just like, this is what I've been looking for. Uh, we, we just mm -hmm. got really lucky on this movie a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, fortunate uh, for you guys, everyone can now see it today. So on arrow-player.com. Yeah. <laughs> so gentlemen, congratulations for our ghost weights and um, congratulations McLeod for your, for your daughter. So, that's Oh, thank you very much. So, yeah. Hey guys, can't wait to see uh, what, what you guys conjure up next. <laughs> so <laughs> so ne next time. All right, gentlemen. Thank Sounds you good. so much. This was a pleasure. Hey, thank yeah, you. Thank you Bye for now. your time. Bye. Bye.